Today on Be Something Wonderful, we answer the big question. How do I manifest my desires? How do I embody it? How do I shift realities? How, how, how? I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back. Big video today. It's based on a few things. It's based on some questions during sessions yesterday. It's based on an email from a subscriber that I've called Mary. And I've done two or three videos on Mary's realizations, on Mary's manifestations, on Mary's shift in reality and her perspective. I'm gonna to touch on another email that I got from her, a big realization that ties into this, to questions that I've had in sessions, but also to this subscriber who's also a client, her, her question. I cannot, this is what she says, I cannot seem to grasp how to let conditions be as bad as they are and not get triggered and stay in my I am. I get it, but this is coming from the small me. This is coming from your horizontal experience. You can't get there from there. You will never grasp it from the linear, uh, horizontal, small me. It can't do it. it never, you'll never get there. Remember, you keep looking for the answer out there in the conditions in the linear horizontal experience, right? Judging the linear horizontal con conditions and experience as bad, right? And then saying, I, I get triggered and I can't stay in my I am. I want to say a few things. The answer is not the conditions. The answer is not out there. It's within you. This is why we say I am, right? The answer is not in the 3D linear experience. The answer is you are no matter what. That's the answer. You are. In other words, I am that I am no matter what. You are and will always be the answer, the process, the, the answer to all, everything you want. You are the embodiment of your desires, right? Conditions are conditions, but I am that famous client that has done a 180 in his entire life in every area, every area. Being triggered is, remember, what is being triggered mean? It just means it's you telling you that you're not those conditions. Otherwise, you wouldn't be triggered. It would feel natural to you. It would feel good to you if you were those conditions. That's all a trigger is. It's telling you that thought, that feeling is not reality. That's what a trigger is. It's telling you that thoughts and feelings are not reality. You are. That's why they don't, quote, feel good. It doesn't, what does that really mean when it, something doesn't feel good or that it feels negative? It means it doesn't feel natural. It doesn't feel natural to your source, to who you are, to that I am. So it's not about not getting triggered. That's telling you that you, that's, that's giving you information. That's telling you, that's your, that's that you, your higher you saying you're not that. You're something so much greater, so much more unlimited. So you are already in that I am. You can't possibly be anybody else, right? You are pure positive energy. So it's, it, it's not, it, remember, it's, it's, it's your nature. It's your name. It's the higher you asking you or saying to you, call me by my name. And I'm going to tell you the significance of this because this really gets into what Mary wrote me. But that's what your, your higher you saying, call me by your name not by the name of the conditions, not by the name of that horizontal me, not by the one that thinks that I am is small and insignificant. Call me by your true name, your true nature. I am that I am. So I want to show this today. And so Mary, the subscriber says, I've been thinking a lot lately about the novel, Call Me By Your Name. She said it was also made in a, in a movie. So she's been thinking about this. This has been coming to her. So she watches the movie. Then she realized that the message is not in the movie. The movie was whatever the movie's about. I don't know what the movie's about, right? I didn't, I've never watched the movie. But she said it wasn't the movie. In other words, it wasn't the story of the movie. In other words, what's her big realization? It, it, the answer is not in the 3D conditions. Hear this. It's not in the story of who you think you are. It's not in that linear horizontal experience. It's in the name. 
Call me by your name. It's in the title in this case, right? The answer to her small me questions. Hi, this is where it all hit her. How to allow my desire to unfold. She asked herself all these questions. How do I just assume it? How do I do it? How can I know? What should I imagine? How, how, how? This is the same with everybody's question. She goes, it's as though that I am, hear her, it's as though that I am, the identity, the new reality, the new version of me, your new state of wish fulfilled, that, that I am is choosing is now telling me. It's, a, it's as though that the great I am, who you really are, is telling you, call me by your name. Call me by your true nature. Forget the triggers, forget the conditions and call me by your name. It's that, I, it's it, that is the I am that you're choosing now is telling you, I am that I am. Do you see it? I'm, I'm gonna hit this a little bit more here. So it's not the process. It's not the technique. It's not the affirmation. It's not the words. It's not the imaginal scene. It's not the scripting. It's not the repetition, it's not the emotion, right? All of those are part of who you are. It's the process of you. All of those are just magnifying that I am within you. But then what is it? If it's not any of the techniques, if it's not any of the processes that create reality, what creates reality? You do. That I am, it's not in any of these. These are all great to have that experience to magnify the Lord or the law or you, for you to, to feel that experience, for you to call forth that reality of which you've already created, of, that you already are, right? It's for you to experience it, but it's not in any of those. The answer is not in any of those. It's your absolute trust, faith, and inner conviction that you are that I am. That's the absolute faith of a mustard seed. A mustard seed is conscious of being a mustard seed and only a mustard seed. It knows it will grow into a mustard plant. Now, well, God, it makes this point, right? It's sealed in the faith, in the conviction that it is a mustard seed and can be nothing else. It's, it's conscious of being that, right? So that absolute conviction, that's what Mary was getting at with the name of that movie that, that kind of gave her a greater knowing, that it's not in the story. It's in call me by your name. What is your name? That name is I am forever and ever. In other words, it's your inner conviction. Call your new reality, announce your new reality. Manifest your desires by calling forth, by calling yourself by your your real name or your real nature. I am that. that. By calling forth that inner conviction, that inner trust, that faith that you are who you are. You are that I am. This is the metaphysical message of scripture. That is your real name or nature is I am. That you are the one and only power and authority behind any process or manifesting technique. That's why it's not in the scripting or the imagining or the affirming or the emotion, or the repetition, because you are the authority. There is no, nothing can have any power over you unless you give it that power, what Jesus said, right? You are the one and only power and authority behind the process or manifesting technique. Your true nature is spirit. Your true nature is all that is. Your true nature is absolute fulfillment no matter what. So you are the one and only source of reality. You are source. That's what Mary was getting at by the name of that movie, Call Me By Your Name. In other words, know that you are source of who you are, that you are that I am, that you're source of everything that you experience in reality. You're not the small me that's imagining, affirming, and trying to change 3D conditions and attract what you desire. That's saying, I, I, these conditions are triggering me these conditions are too much that, I, that oh, okay, if I create my own reality, then I'm the blame for my conditions. You start blaming yourself. You start looking at yourself as a, as a victim. Or you're going, you know, Tom, tell me, show me how to do it. it I, I still don't get the message. You're still wanting something outside yourself to create your reality. 
And if it doesn't happen, then you place blame on others or yourself or anything out there, right? To, to say it's not happening. You are source. The great I am source. That is the source of all things. It's not about imagining for a moment trying to change circumstances or attract them. But the great I am is source. I am the God source of the father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. This is what God said to Moses. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, meaning the God of, of the 3D world, of everything that's in it, of you, that I am, that small me, that whoever you think you are. You, that there is a source of all of it. You're not alone. You're not alone. That, that, the, the, the small me is supported and loved and, and part of that greater father. I am the great I am. I am the God, a source of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, right? The, the, I am the God of those manifestations. I am the God of that 3D reality. I am the source of all of it, right? I, I am not that yet. That, so what you're saying is the small me with its lower thoughts, thoughts limited by feelings of separation from your source. Remember, thoughts... In, in scripture, when they're talking about when Jesus is having that conversation with Moses, the Israelites represent thoughts, but they represent your thoughts being, being in bondage by, by, by lower assumptions, by lower thoughts of who you are. These thoughts that are coming really from true spirit of your true I am are being limited by assumptions and thoughts, 3D linear thoughts of separation. Do you see it? And you're saying, I am not that I am yet, but you are. So let's hit this a little bit more. Who I am that I should, oh yeah, who am I? This is what Moses, when, when, when God says to Moses, you're going you're gonna to free the Israelites from Egypt. Remember, Egypt representing material consciousness. Egypt representing the 3D world of conditions, right, that looks so real. In, in Israel, the Israelites representing your thoughts, the potential of those thoughts to be higher thoughts, the potential in you to rise in consciousness, right? Right now they're in bondage when you're looking at Egypt, when you're looking at the conditions. But as you, as you rise in consciousness, you free them, right? I, and then what, it, but, but when we do that, right, we get triggered, we look at conditions and then we say, who am I? that I should go to the Pharaoh and that I should bring the sons of Israel out of Egypt. You start wondering, who am I to, to say that I'm God? Who am I to say that I am that I am? Who am I to say that I deserve my desires? I deserve everything I want by my right of birth and nothing else. Who am I to say that? And, and the, the, remember that the Pharaoh represents this lower 3D linear will of trying to make things happen. That's what the Pharaoh represents, trying to make things happen, trying to manipulate reality, right? Egypt representing those conditions. Pharaoh tried the will to manipulate them. Egypt representing the conditions themselves, the people and events that seem to control your experience, right? Israel being those thoughts and assumptions that really are coming from source, but that you're limiting those thoughts and assumptions by, by, by placing limitations and thoughts of, uh, other thoughts of separation on them right? God to Moses, your inner conviction as that I am says, I will certainly be with you. That's God's answer. I will certainly be with you because I am you. You are me. I am that I am, right? Who am I to announce, declare, and claim my desires as fulfilled? That's what you're saying, right? Because that is your nature. It's your name. It's your birth rate. That's why it's your name forever and ever. I am that I am. That's what God was saying, Right? He was making that connection of himself with you as that only I am, as the only source. He's saying, you're the only source. Right? And I will always be with you as that greater source, but you are one with me. You're not just the operant power. You are all power to, make, to be, do, or have whatever you want. Right? You, are, you are the power. You are the power. You don't just operate it. You don't just, you don't just activate it. You are that power. There's no, there's no reality outside of you because that's your nature. That's your name. That's your birth rate, right? And so Moses, still struggling with under what authority he can command and announce his reality, it is done. 
That's what was going on. He was still struggling on what authority can I say it's done? Can I announce it? That's what you've been saying. Tom, can I just say, I, can I just announce it? Don't I have to suffer and do all these processes and, and put all these conditions and meet all these other things? Be a good person, manifest, feel good thoughts, right? Affirm it until I'm blue in the face, right? Nothing wrong with, with, um, with uh, processes. But it's the, it's, the remember, it's the memory or the awareness that you are the process. Then you merge with the process. Then, you're desi- then, you, then whoever you're being must be re- 3D reality. 3D reality must yield to it, right? I'm in Barbados and I went first class. Remember, the teachings of Neville got it, right? And his teacher saying, you are in Barbados and you went first class, right? And, and here's what... Um, uh, yeah, and here's it. I will say to them, this is Moses, still not believing, still struggling with it. He says to God, I will say to them, in other words, I will say to the children of Israel, the Israelites, your thoughts and assumptions, right? Your thoughts and assumptions. The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And, they say, and, and then they say to me, well, what is his name? What is his nature? What shall I say to them? So that's you. That's your, but what's your name? What's your nature? Call me by your name. What, what shall I say to them when they ask me, who sent me to you? Right? What, under what authority can I declare that I am already that which I desire to be? Under what authority can you do that? How audacious of you. How bold of you to declare it. Under what authority? Right? The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And then that's when God answers, I am that I am. I am has sent me to you. I am that I am that's within you. I am that I am that's your source, and you are one with that source. God's revealing your true nature and name. I am one in the only source. That's what God was saying there, revealing your true nature and your true name. That really is the answer to that subscriber and client's question on how. The how is within you. It's the absolute assertion, absolute conviction, absolute announcement announcement that you are source. There is no source outside of you. The big question answered, how do I manifest my desires? How do I embody it? How do I declare it? You do it because I am that I am, right? Your I am is saying, call me by my name. Call me by my nature. Be aware of your higher nature. Leave those conditions. Be triggered. Understand what the trigger is telling you. The trigger is just telling you who you that you are something much more than those thoughts and conditions, that those are not who you are, that they are not your true nature. Otherwise, they would feel good. That's the power there. That, that's your sign within yourself that you are in that new reality, that you are only I am, the great I am. You're one with the great I am. That's what that's all telling you. And it's saying, now move your awareness to what you want and be that now. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, thank you. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for liking and sharing and commenting on the videos. Thank you for joining our Facebook group, the Be Something Wonderful Ambassadors, at facebook.com slash groups slash be something wonderful. For joining us on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen. And for joining our membership channel. If you've already joined, thank you. If you haven't, there's a link below. Join us there. There's more content, a lot more videos. I released a video about a week ago. Another one's coming out shortly. There will be a live stream. All that's coming and more. This is Tom, Karen, (laughs) with Be Something Wonderful, coming to you from Las Vegas with great love, with great light, and infinite gratitude. Creators, we'll see you soon.